which is a great way to interact with our um, the other people and, and ask questions of our moppers and our experts. So to get us started, we'd really love to know um, where it is that you're joining us from and what the weather's doing this evening, because I think it's going to change quite a bit this evening as it goes through. And then we've got, Chloe's just used one, we've got the reactions, which are down at the bottom of the screen. Um, we can give our mothers and our presenters and our poets um, a little bit of love and applause as the session goes on. Um, so now, without any further ado, I'm going to pass over to my colleague Naomi. Hi, hello, welcome to the third Watch Moths of the Year. And this is an, another special one, uh, eclectic mix of moths and energy and creativity. Um, we always really look forward to them. So uh, moth, moth Watch or Watch Moths, can't even get the name right, but Watch Moths is um, the monthly broadcast of our project called Moths to a Flame. And for those of you that don't know, Moths to a Flame is a massive art, or will be a project that provides a massive art installation uh, up in Glasgow at COP26 in November. And it's funded by the Arts Council and a crowd funder that we ran last winter in Plymouth. And our partners, Plymouth Energy Community, are really key in this as well, so that they help us join the moths and the art and the energy all together. So tonight we are going to uh, watch and see some lovely moths, which are always stars of the show. Uh, but we are looking at the moths and their attraction to light as a metaphor for the way humans behave with energy and in the planet as well. So we um, basically combine nature, energy and the climate emergency as a, a wonderful, well, no, it's not always, we, we try and be positive about it, but it's a wonderful mix in which we extract some stories and some love and some ideas for living a different sort of future. Um, we've got an amazing mix of uh, presenters tonight. Uh, we've got moth experts and I'll start, I'll, I'll read them out and they can wave to you. Um, some of you will know each other and some of you won't. So we have Amy Walkden from in South Devon. Are you there, Amy? I'm waving at you. <laughs> Good evening. Yeah, I'm here. I'm waving back. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> looking, forward, looking forward to your garden and your moths tonight and tomorrow morning, Amy. Thank um, you. We've got Simon Bates in his garden. Simon. Good evening, everybody from Exeter. Lovely to see everyone. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking forward to, to your moths as well, Simon. And we have um, Dave Hodgson all the way in Cornwall, who's been mothing like mad over the last few months. Hi, everybody. Yeah, greetings from deepest, darkest Cornwall. We're just battening down the hatches, waiting for an enormous thunderstorm to arrive. So the moth trapping is going to be interesting tonight. Exciting, even. Yeah, exciting is the word. And um, Dave Hodgson in, is uh, responsible for a lot of the ecological research and goings on at, in Penryn at the Penryn campus of Exeter University. And also there, who's a researcher in solar energy, solar power cells, um, is Katie Shank. So hello, Katie. We're, we're going to hear a bit about what's what's been going on in your research labs. Hello, nice to see you. You're you're muted, Katie, but you'll we'll un we'll make sure we're all unmuted later. Um, and then we've got Sarah Olsbury and Paul Buckley, who are in Mid Devon, and they have some moths to show us tonight because they knew about the weather and they they set their traps yesterday. So hello, you two. Yes, hello everyone. Yeah, we've got some really nice moths to show you, which if they behave and don't fly off as soon as we open up the box 
Well, yeah. <laughs> it'll be really nice. Yeah, it'll be super. Anyway, looking forward to it. And fantastic evening. Thank you very much for inviting us. No, thank you for sitting through and showing us what you find. That's great. And then we have Joe Heckett and Ray Porter. Joe, are you there? You're you're our winning poet from our poetry competition. A yeah. recent a recent slam we held on Tuesday and um your poem was wonderful and voted for by the masses. Are you Thank there? You. Yeah, I'm here looking forward to reading it and uh, finding out more about moths. Great. Even more. Yeah, thanks. And uh, Ray Porter, are you there as well? Hello, yes, I'm here. Ray, I'm, I'm tonight, I'm on the other side. Usually I'm in the audience, so it's yeah. <laughs> Is it, interesting does it feel, to be here. Does it feel different? It does. Ah, yeah, well, it does. once you've once you've done your poem, you can swap if you like. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then we have out in Oxfordshire, out on a wind farm and solar array, we have Emma Arnold, who's who works on that site with visitors and schools and such like. Are you there? Hiya. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful evening with loads of wind, which is ideal for renewable energy. So it's all good here. Great. Well, we look forward to hearing a bit more about your place later. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks for being out there and in it. That, that's great. It makes all <laughs> no, it's a good place to be. It. Yeah, good. And um, then we've got uh, Chloe and Jenny, I think, are our, which Hi. you've met Jenny, but you haven't met Chloe. Hello. Hello. Nice Hello, to see Chloe. everyone. I'm going to be joined by my boys, Hector and Felix, in a minute, hopefully. So they'll, they'll um, tumble in through the door in a bit. Oh, good. Uh, we've, I know we've got Dave from Laser Cuts in the audience and he enjoys your boys' company. Well, we all do, but I'm, I'm sure there are people looking forward to meeting them. Hello, hello, Felix and Hector. Hello. Hello, good, good to see you. So, as you can see, it's quite, um, we, we're quite a big crew and we must get on with our show and I think first up is Amy in her garden and talking about where your trap and where you've set it up and what other creatures you've got around there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I think so. Hi. Yeah, so welcome um, from Abbots Kurzweil. Um, got a little garden here which is under cover, so I will be um, able to set up my trap, um, which I've turned on now. And if the rain starts coming down, I can just draw it in under here. So hopefully um, we might have some moss to show you in the morning. It's been a really lovely, steamy, sort of hot and mothy week. And um, I've got some pictures to show you. I normally have some caterpillars, um, but mine have uh, rather unfortunately buried themselves in the last day. So I've only really got a tank of mud to show you otherwise. Um, let me flip my camera around if I can remember how on earth to do it. Here we are. And I'll show you some pictures instead. Um, so here's my tank of mud. Um, I've also got some caterpillars uh, that are um, butterfly caterpillars. I'll go back to that. But I just wanted to sh show you because it's just so exciting. My garden is full of ragwort. And um, as a result of that, it's now full of these wonderful, stripy, black, hairy, a hello from Pippin, um, caterpillars all munching away at all different stages of their development. Um, masses this year which is just great to see so you know all down to no mow may and um just basically neglecting my garden um i've got this very interesting little thing that looks like a blob of poo to show you and that's exactly what it's designed to look like this you can see kind of get the idea of the size this is something i caught last week first time in my trap it's not the proper name but i know it's chinese character moth and it's actually designed to look like a bit of bird poo. Um, so what an amazing bit of evolution that is. So it doesn't get eaten by the birds. So that was an exciting one to get in the trap. There's a nice uh, peppered moth there as well. Look up pepper mo peppered moths. I know I've talked about them before. Um, and then this magnificent, look at the colours on that, is a green silver lines moth. And I was very, very happy to see that as well last week. Um, we've got a scalloped oak. And this is my uh, stepdaughter and her girlfriend. 
with a beautiful poplar hawk moth as well. We had lots of hawk moths. And this is a painted lady um, butterfly, which I'm sure you all recognize. And here are the pupa. So you can see there's three there. One of them is um, hatched already, and that's the picture of that one. And the other two, which have gone very dark now, and they were beautiful um, gold flecked cocoons until a couple of days ago, I think are due to go, hopefully not tomorrow with all the storms. Um, very soon they'll be out. Um, Barry gave me those. Those who've watched before remember Barry Henwood, our Devon moth recorder, and he's my uh, caterpillar dealer. And then in, wrapped up in one of these nettle leaves is a um, small tortoise shell caterpillar as well that will also be coming out at some point when it's ready to. So there's a few things there. Sorry about my dog. Um, oh, I'm still there. I'm still there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a few things to show you, and um, but hopefully the bit li more live things in the morning, yeah. provided you know don't get washed away. Well, hopefully, hopefully we won't be uh, washed away, Amy. And and those those caterpillars, do you do you um, have to feed them a massive amount? Or, or Which ones? The uh, the the stripy black and yeah, the cinnabar moth. Nothing yeah. at all. No, I just let the ragwort grow in the garden, and yeah. the moths will find them. And the moth, let me just sorry, the, the caterpillars are very distinctive and yeah. very toxic, and the moths are particularly splendid, black and red. Here, cinnabar oh, moth, and they're day flying moths. We ought to think a bit more about day flying moths and their relationship with energy, because obviously it's a a different thing but um there's some very very beautiful ones out there and um yeah just very excited to see and the word cinnabar itself is just so nice as well and poetic so yeah love them. love them i um i went for a walk before this before watch moths this evening and i was walking through long grass and i was amazed at the number of little tiny moths were it was a very busy lively alive meadow yeah perfect yeah. yeah so i was hoping that was quite a good sign for tonight as long as we don't get too much rain <laughs> okay well thank you and we look forward to seeing your moths in the morning Amy. yeah I'll see you in the morning yeah <laughs> and um do chat away if you if you see anything else interesting this evening so we're, we're now moving on to chloe who is going to share with you the the poems and the well just talk about messages and joining in with uh, Moths to a Flame generally. Hello, Hello everyone. Hi. Hi. Is there all on my hat? I think everyone likes your hat. Yeah. So we have had a most amazing month since the last Watch Moths and last night we were thinking about our Golden Moth Awards. Um, yeah. So we uh, share golden moth awards with all sorts of wonderful people who do brilliant things for the moth to flame project and the most of the moth awards this this month were presented to an incredible collection of poets uh, because Ju uh, july has been all about poetry this this month all about finding words that we want to share with the powers that be finding the words that we want to talk about when we think about climate change and COP26 and yesterday we had just the most well we just had an last incredible school. oh yeah last day of school so that that was pretty epic but we also had oh, some God. um some incredible poets so our winner and runner-up are here this evening um, and I'm going to invite you to have a listen to them. And we're going to start with a poem from Ray Porter. Um, so hello, Ray. Thank you ever so much for your poem. Um, tell us a bit about your poem and then read it to us. Uh, well, my poem is called The World of Energy and it was written specifically for the Poetry Slam. So. Um, and, and the um, categories were, were moths and energy. Um, and so I tried to do, I'm, being an energy worker, that energy thing was really sort of my passion, but I tried to fit some moths in there as well. So, um, so this is my poem, The World of Energy. There's so many things around me I notice when I see the way that light presents a web or bounces off a tree. 
A buzzing bee around a flower, a bird upon a wall, a wriggling worm, the sparkling sea, the sound of pigeons call. The way a leaf blows on the ground, it's skipping so alive, propelled with all life's energy and natural push to thrive. A world within, a world within, a hidden life in view, and human beings, despite their masks, are part of nature too. Our cells, our bones, our systems, all miracles in form, which sadly we've forgotten in our desire to perform. The energy that gives us strength and lights up all the earth, brings oaks from tiny acorns, propels a woman to give birth. Do we stop to feel the way a moth seeks out the light? Our navigating sailors understood this sense all right. But we have lost our way a bit. We're blind to what is here, insisting on security and basing life on fear. The form of things develop shape, a bird, a cloud, a door. It will stay in form for a certain time and then it is no more. The answer is all around us. We only have to look. The beautiful colours of a moth, the babbling of a brook, the blue of a sky that isn't a thing, the chattering of an otter, the way that water evaporates when the air gets hotter. To slow things down, to see and hear, to take just what we need, to listen to our inner voice and challenge fear and greed, to take accountability for the damage that we wreak and listen to the subtle voice that to us nature speaks. We have been blessed with will to choose, so how will you respond? Will you be an enemy or can you see beyond this world of stuff of things to have, the need to gather more to the world of energy that lives within our core? Thank you. Well done. I really enjoyed that, Ray. Thank you so much. It's so nice to hear it again. And we're really excited to be publishing it in a, a collection, an anthology of poems that have been pulled together by the project. So thank you so much for sharing your poem with us. We're going to go to Jo Heckett now. Thank you so much, Jo, for joining us. And mega congratulations. All the kudos. What a wonderful winner. Thank you so much. Um, please, can you tell us a bit about your poem and then, and then share it with us? I will. First of all, I just want to say thanks to Ray. It was even better the second time round. I loved hearing it. Really gorgeous. Um, I actually wrote this poem for my sister who was co-hosting an online event last year. Um, and it was on the theme of moths and transformation and also infinity. So the starting idea was that the shape of the moth is kind of like the Limoniscuit, which is the sign for infinity. Um, and when I started researching them, the things that I found out just really sparked my imagination. So I believe the earth is alive. And so I'm really interested in the magic of the physical. So that's where all my poems start. So this is about what I imagine to be the magic of moth, I suppose. And it's called The Night Butterfly or moths see color in the dark. Day has faded, taken all her measurements and surety with her. In the pitch jet obsidian shadow left behind, I see all the colors you think have gone forever. Tints and hues, truer than you can imagine, all visible to me. I navigate by the stars. My wings make minuscule adjustments, micro alter my path. I'm seeking bliss. The palest flower is my love. I find her scent and in the living air of midnight follow her trail. Richer than rose, deeper than lavender, stronger than lilac wilder than honeysuckle. She and her sisters shine, nestled in their dark beds of green. Like me, she's made for the night. Her beauty competes with the moon. She captures the tiniest particles of light and multiplies them, magnifies them with her glow. 
I know change. I dissolved and was reborn, reconfigured beyond memory, turned inside out from day to night. I know what it is to surrender, to give up all, to submit and undergo, relinquish, see, succumb. I know what it is to trust the dark. And my eyes see a rainbow world where yours see only danger. Thank you. Hey. Beautiful. Oh my goodness, we had so much fun listening to your poem last night and it was lovely hearing it again. Thank you so much, Joe. And I can't wait to um I can't wait to be able to hear them in the Botanic Gardens as well. So all of the poems are going to be recorded and played in the Botanic Gardens. So that's wonderful. And they're going to be played with all sorts of other messages that we've been collecting. And we've been having messages sent to us from all over the world. In fact, we just had a lovely set of messages sent from a school in Turkey where English is their second language and they still produce the most beautiful messages to the people for COP26. And so I've asked Hector and Felix to have a think about the sorts of things that they would like to say. And I think you've, you've come up with something, haven't you? Yes. What, yeah, you go first, go on. Um, I'm just saying, um, maybe you could help um, or stop putting plastic in the oceans and make a more recyclable sort of um, plastic. Mm. Because, and um, one that will break down um, and not just stay in the world and never break down. Mm. That's something that you've been talking about quite a bit at school and you've been thinking about that and worrying about that quite a bit, haven't you? Yeah. So that's a great message to share. And what about you, Felix? What is it that you're wanting to share as your message for COP26? So, um, I'm hoping that, like, am I allowed to see that? Yeah, you're allowed to say. Um, I'm hoping that people stop murdering um, like animals that you don't need to eat. Like, yeah, stop murdering wallabies. Yeah, you really worry about wallabies, don't you? And what was it that you were wanting to say about the land where the animals live? Um, like, stop, like destroying their habitat. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the boys have been thinking about some very serious things at school and they've been talking about climate change at school and and um, so so those are the boys' messages and we'll take those up to COP26 as well. <laughs> and I really hope that everyone here can go onto our website and hit the record button and send their messages as well. Oh, Mom. Thanks, bye. 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 Um, Hi, thank you. Thanks, Chloe, and really good messages there. And yeah, I I loved hearing the poems again. And as Chloe said, all all the recordings are on our website as a blog, so you can hear those poems over and over. And they will also be part of a book, and then they'll be also in our installation. So. Now we are going all the way down to Cornwall, fluttering down there where the weather seemed to be still a little bit better than here, although Dave is, is threatening, saying it's going to get really badly <laughs> and horrible. But I'm anyway, not, yeah, I'm is, not threatening bad weather. It's the no, weather. No, the, right. the weather is threatening bad weather. Yeah, okay, the weather's threatening bad weather. But um, how are you doing, Dave, in your garden? And where um, is your trap? How, where have you put it today, tonight? Uh, so doing very well, thank you, Naomi, and thank you for having me back. So I joined you last year, didn't I, yeah. um, to talk about to talk about moth and energy related research that happens at the University of Exeter on the Penryn campus, and it was the it was a part of my journey into the world of mothing 
as well. So I'd always, I had always dabbled with it in the past, but it had become, it had become something important to me last year because it was part of my daily routine and my, and my wellness and my mindfulness through lockdown. Um, and I think like for many people this year is has somehow turned into a, a bit of an extension of last year hasn't it with some improvements and, and then some worsening and some suffering but some also some positivity with 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 family time so it's been it's it's been a, a mixture of emotions year but the, the constant that has threaded through it is that I've kept my moth trapping going um I mean I saw it through I stubbornly saw it through the winter um and kind of gave up when the moths stopped arriving but then started again in in perhaps stupidly early spring and we've had a we've had a we had a terrible spring didn't we perhaps one of your events was talking about this this was a for people who love moths it was a difficult spring to survive because there were so few moths arriving but suddenly through june and july the garden has come alive and the moths have started arriving so i'm in i'm in central falmouth but we um we live, we're lucky, we have a house that has um, a large garden and we're shadowed um, by three or four very large lime trees. So um, variously, I, I put the trap out under a lime tree or down amongst some Chilean myrtles, always trying to keep some open sky in front of me because I can never tell whether the moths are arriving from the vegetation or being drawn in from the open sky. Um, this this year I've had to move the trap around a lot more because I have a family of robins who have become very used to where I trap and are there ready to snap up a tasty breakfast uh, when I release the traps, uh, release the moths in the morning. So actually what moves me around is uh, is the predators that are, <laughs> that are following me and trying to trying to take in some of the energy that I've caught overnight. Um, but that's been a revelation as well. So in a sense, the moths have pushed me to new corners of the garden. And for the mothers in the audience, you probably get this as well. Every day is different. Every corner of the garden is different. Every weather pattern is different. And the moths just keep rewarding us by changing the species and the abundance and the behaviors. So, um, so it's been amazing. I'm going to I'm I'm probably going to ramble on because I'm so enthusiastic about it this year. Oh, uh, you, I I think you want me to talk about research but the problem is you've put me just after a poet and yeah. some children. So the last thing you want at that point um is uh, <laughs> is is boring science and oh, and the rambling on. Gee, we like we like the change as well. You could you could make it less boring science. <laughs> I'll try to, I'll try to make it less boring science. But so the moths are going to arrive fingers crossed. The moths are going to arrive tomorrow morning we'll be, and we'll be showing you some moths. We've caught some really cool stuff in the garden this year. The numbers have been growing, the species richness has been growing and we've had some, probably some moths that I wouldn't even have recognised last year. I may have just passed over them and thought they were somewhere else, but I think with an, another year of expertise, um, I've taken that time to pause and think, hang on, actually, maybe you aren't the thing that, um, that I first thought you were. And so we've had, we've had little thorns um we've had silky wainscots um moths that we actually feel like we shouldn't we shouldn't be trapping so in that spirit of change and renewal and assemblages and uh the children the families that are around us and the education that we're doing in the middle of all that is the research and the discovery of new knowledge and this is what we do in cornwall so on the penren campus um, we have a center for ecology and conservation which i'm the director of and, uh, and we have an Environment and Sustainability Institute as well, which I'm not the director of, but which I'm delighted to be, um, to be involved in. And in that mix are actually hundreds of ecologists um, and people who research and educate in the realm of sustainability. So there's the marriage that brings together um, the ecology of the the wildlife around us, including the moths, and then the energy system that we're part of and the energy that we use. And um, I'm actually, I don't really want to talk about the research too much because the one project that I think deserves the most attention is the project, um, the fellowship that's just been won by Katie Shanks, who's our next speaker, who, wow. ac who actually is bringing together the world of moths and butterflies and the world of energy and helping us to understand 
new ways of new ways of working with energy mm. that is going to be taught to us lo and behold by moths and butterflies i mean it, it, it doesn't really get better than that does it or how better to think about wildlife than to think about them as absorbers and users and sharers of energy and then to learn from them about how to do it better than we have been doing it in the past well fantastic Dave, yeah, we will. We'll go over to Katie yes, and celebrate. Go to Katie. You, but, but, but um, thank you, thank you for that and all those thoughts and and the well-being and the mindfulness element of it all as well. And we look forward to seeing or hearing about whatever you manage during pick, finding during the night, evening, and the night. So, see you in the morning. And let's go over to Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi Naomi, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. And we, we're, we are so dead impressed that you've, you've got some fellowship and a, a, a developing new project you, do you want to share? Yeah, yeah. I mean, thanks to Dave for giving me that, um, that intro. I, uh, I don't think I could have gotten a better one there. Um, but yeah, so the fellowship is, is really just a uh, so a fellowship is where the it's focused on the researcher and their specific projects. You can design a project. You say, "This is what I want to do. This, this is why I want to do it." You know, let me do this thing, and why it's important. Um, and so they picked mine, which is looking into uh, butterfly wings, specifically the cabbage white butterfly, and the nano structures of its wings, because the cabbage white butterfly does something special and it actually sunbathes in the morning. And it does it with its wings in a V shape uh, so that it concentrates light onto its body to kind of warm it up faster so it can fly before the other butterflies and get to all the best fruit and things. Uh, and so we're looking at the uh, wings to copy those nanostructures to make some really lightweight, really efficient um, solar technology because obviously concentrating light, uh, we can do that also for solar panels and then that means we can use less um, of that expensive photovoltaic material by having instead these kind of mirrors or optics that kind of focus a large area of light to a smaller area of solar panel, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we'll be doing that and we'll also be looking at the glass wing um, butterfly. Uh, and actually moths, so moth eyes have already been copied for solar panels. So a lot of the surfaces of solar panels have this kind of really um, uh, kind of structure where there's lots of folds which just kind of increases the surface area of the solar panel and so more light gets trapped and absorbed on solar panels because of moth eyes and it was inspired by moth eyes in the first place and um, so that's already that already exists so and um, the fact that now we can look at more uh, in nature to develop more technology for for solar energy gain um, is very exciting and hopefully there'll be I reckon there will be a lot more research to come out of this as well which is also very exciting and it's just it's nice um i think one of the the refreshing things whenever you're doing interdisciplinary research you know bringing two, these things together uh, this is what this is called interdisciplinary research is it's it's that it's like you could be doing something really really in-depth and mathsy and simulation and software and then you might want a break and you think oh well I'll just go and look at some butterflies or some moths or something that is still work but is actually very nice to do for a bit of a change so at least that's that's definitely one of the one of the many advantages I think of this kind of research and looking at nature and bringing nature and engineering together as well. Yeah oh well yeah that that all sounds brilliant Katie and and we um we've actually been down to penryn to work with you and some of your uh co-researchers and uh, various students and so on and we um to to uh share some of that knowledge and learn from you guys because without your knowledge we can't develop in a i don't know to use the creativity that we want to use in developing new ideas for how, how a solar panel looks or how to engage youngsters and people in in how what they're made of and all that sort of thing exactly i mean one of the one of the key things that i want to do in the research is change um so yeah you have your standard solar panel but actually we need it 
smaller and integrated and and this is exactly what art and energy are trying to do as well it's change what people think about solar panels and have them just more I want to use a different word than integrated, but yeah, have them part of our, our smart cars and our smart buildings and everything, which is which is necessary, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for coming along and sharing that. And we're hoping that in September we will be coming over to uh, Penryn and working with some of the students that are on the courses there at the ESI and around. And, and when we do that, Dave, we might come and say hello to you too if that's all right but uh, you'd, you'd be very welcome and i i think it's what uh, you've mentioned education there and i think education is absolutely essential in here is what i meant to talk about actually which is that rather than doing research on moths i've what i've been sharing moths with students of all ages and the educational value especially during lockdown has been absolutely extraordinary and we've seen it with the increase in the number of people who are now trapping in their own gardens and sharing the information more widely it's growing it's growing and growing and growing yeah. and and the national moth week and other such weeks and organizations that concentrate their efforts in that education proliferation of of knowledge and do such amazing things to raise raise that awareness of how everything is integrated i'll use katie's word integrated together so um, thank you from down there in Cornwall and um, we're now going to move up country a bit, in fact up right up to Oxfordshire where we have Emma Arnold in the middle of a wind turbine field and solar array are you there, Emma? Yeah, I'm here. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. and um, Emma, you, you're, I mean, you're going to sh talk to us again tomorrow morning about um, the Moths to a Flame project and what, what you're doing with that. But you are one of 10 partners, 10 sites that we're working with across the UK from Cornwall up to Glasgow. And... Um, that, and this evening, I was I was asking you to uh, share a bit of information about your site and, and yeah. how how you get people in, get engaged in using the the energy, etc., or how it came to be as well. Definitely. No. Um. Firstly, we're really thrilled to be involved. So thank you. Uh, it's wonderful. And actually, it was really interesting just listening just now because I'm really fascinated by biomimicry and and the way you know we're inspired by animals to design. So that's really interesting for me to hear. Um, as you can probably hear, it's quite windy up here, um, and that's because we're a really high flat site. Um, in fact, behind me is the Uffington White Horse, which is the only other similarly high site in the area. And as a result, um, this used to be an airfield actually during World War II. Um, and right up until the 70s, when it was turned into an arable farm. Uh, and the arable farm is now organically farmed, but by a very interesting gentleman. And he's actually out in his, um, uh, doing his harvesting at the moment because of the weather tomorrow. Um, but he's a chap called Adam Twine. And the story, if I can give you a bit of background, is fascinating. Uh, because it is so high and windy here, in 1992, he decided that it would be a really ideal spot for a wind farm. Um, and he wanted not just to, uh, he was thinking about sustainable energy, obviously, but he wanted to create something that was community owned to sort of invest in the community as well. Um, at that time, you know, it was still quite a new idea and the project actually took 16 years to plan. Uh, so it was a huge thing, but he was completely committed to it. Um, and as a result, both our, our wind and our solar are run by cooperatives. So, you know, groups of members, like-minded people who had a similar sort of local energy vision. And that's been a really important part of the project. Um, so if I can talk you through it a little bit, I think behind me, you can see three of our turbines. Um, I'll, so as not to make you queasy, I'll turn slowly. But we've actually got five wind turbines. Um, those five turbines power 2,500 homes in the very local area. And now with some of the new energy tariffs, you can actually, I, I live very locally and I, I've been able to choose to get my energy from, from here, which is wonderful. 
Um, they were built in sections, so they were delivered in sections by road. Some of you may have seen that happening. It's fascinating sightseeing turbines delivered. And um, it only took eight days when the, apologies, my battery's low. It only took eight days for them actually to uh, get them up when, when they were finally approved. So the first electric was generated here in, I think, February 2008. Um, and they only take up 1% of the farm. So actually it's really efficient use of space as well. And as I hope you can hear, if you can hear the wind, you may also be able to hear a little bit of road noise, but I think it's unlikely that you can hear the turbines. I can't hear them from where I'm standing. They're actually remarkably quiet. Um, if I turn slightly further, next to the very last turbine behind me is the solar array, and that's actually hidden by a field hedge but you can see it a little bit from this angle. Um, that's made up of 21,000 panels, I think it is, in roughly 32 rows. Um, and that powers slightly less, powers, um, sorry, slightly fewer, about 1,100 homes. Um, that, was, that came slightly later. Um, so we sort of did the wind section first and then the space, which is about 30 acres, was allocated for solar panels. Um, but again, that's been a huge success as well, mainly down to this sort of community involvement. And I think what's fascinating about that is the fact that initially quite a lot of people were a bit suspicious of this renewable energy, you know, the turbines, what they look like. Um, people have strange concerns about solar panels and their reflectivity, whereas actually they're not reflective at all. They don't glare, cause glare. Um, so when you know, those people who are involved in pushing for these important projects got past that, actually the community was really invested. So it's been a fantastic, you know, 20 years in the making of this year, um, and all down to this sort of visionary farmer. He farms his farm organically. Again, if I turn gently, you can see behind me, we've got these wildflower verges, and inside the solar array, which is cordoned off, it's just wildflower meadow. So um, we get all sorts of uh, flora and fauna. We've got orchids this year. We've got um, corn bunting, which I believe are pretty rare and they're sort of an indicator species. Um, we get butterflies. We're hoping to find out what moths we get. We see hares. It's, you know, it's a beautiful place to be and something we're really proud of. Um, it, I think the solar and the wind together have a combined yearly saving of about 8,500 tonnes of, of carbon emissions, which is something to be proud of. And, and also, I believe it's the only place where you can see solar and wind combined in the same place in the south of England. So that is good too. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It looks, it looks brilliant. And um, another th it's another thing in that area of the, the solar array and around there, the, the soil is rested because it's it's fenced off for that's, five years. That's right. Yeah, no, they do. He does an element of rotation naturally, I believe, with arable farming. But also there, I mean, these, these wildflower verges are very wide and that is allocated land that's never going to be farmed. Um, you know, there's a lot of within the meadow that I believe there are wildflowers growing naturally. So there, even when crops are growing there is a habitat there but the whole of, of the 30 acres of solar um, array is completely given over to wildflower meadow and the great thing about that is that can't be destroyed it's cordoned off for safety reasons but that also means that you know it's, it's looked after yeah and and the communities around so they benefit from using the energy but do as a, as a cooperative do the uh, profits go back to the community in any way? Absolutely. So that's one of the reasons I'm here. I'm the education branch because that's my background. And um, they go back into the community. We put solar panels on various, various sort of local municipal buildings, onto schools. Um, we do a lot of educational products in schools and for schools. Um, and not just things like tours around the site here, but we run activities as well um, and talk a lot, you know, two schools about sustainability and renewable energy and biodiversity, which is also a really important part of it. And it's it's been, you know, I think for the community, it's been something to be really proud of as well. You know, they know more about it as a result. 
they wanted to get involved financially, but more as a sort of personal investment than a financial investment, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for introducing the site. Um, Not at all. Yeah, we we uh, look forward to hearing, you know, some of the activities you hope to be organising in the summer and later on in the summer, Emma. And um, if anyone has any questions, they might pop up in the chat if you keep an eye on them. I, I, know, do. I know your phone's about to possibly... It's about to die, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you can, we can, you can answer them in the morning. If, if Definitely. You... No, that, that would be brilliant. And I think that the dramatic clouds are coming in now, so it's probably time to head back soon anyway. Yeah, and it'll be dark here. So... Um, it's great. It's great to have somebody most months, somebody in the in a renewable energy site, you know, someone who's actually working within that industry and on the land and in that place again, where the, the wildlife and the energy um, combine. And we'll have to get them. We'll have to get them some offers. Yeah, that'd be fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Emma. And thanks so um, much. That's all right. And uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Definitely. See you then. Yeah, lovely. And moving moving on, I just just before we um, come up to Mid Devon or come back down towards Mid Devon, uh, we've got we've got a few mothers in our audience, and um, they are set. Some of them may be set up their moth traps in different places be good if you could you mothers out there in the audience could let each other know you might have already been doing that because I haven't been watching every single message that's going on in chat but if you've got a moth trap out there and you haven't let anyone know that you're setting it and you're going to see what's there during the night please please do put it in the chat and um, share that information um, because it's this sort of it, it's nice to feel part of the community and you know that we're all we're all here even if we're on zoom we're all here on earth uh, interested in moths and energy so let's let's move on then to Sarah and Paul you you were both very wise uh, because you knew it was going to be raining hard tonight and so you set your moth trap last night and you have a few moths to show us possibly we just need to find you yes you thank you for uh, accommodating us yeah so our trap rain. wouldn't cope with rain and electric is not a good combination need to share my screen Oh, can I just pass over to Paul now? Can I just interject slightly? There's, a, there's quite a bit of an okay. So is it Paul's camera that you'd like spotlighted, and it's Paul's one that's yeah. going to on the, on the sound? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes, I'll yeah. And and um, Ray, you're still on speaker. I think we can still hear you a little bit. So if you could mute, that would be great. Hello, Paul. You're, you're Hi. going to show us Hi. some of the moths you found. Um, yes. You had this morning. Last night. Can you can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm just going to switch my phone over, and we are we are losing the light a little bit. Um, but hopefully, I've got a, another spotlight, so hopefully you'll be able to see um, some of these. Um, this is one you'll probably have seen many times, but it never it never um wears off it's a elephant hawk moth um is that in focus yeah it's great yeah. and and yeah. they're so they're just so beautiful every time you see one they're beautiful aren't they this is the um the one that that uh, has a fantastic caterpillar with huge eyes and usually on willow herbs um and we we get quite a lot of these um over the um over the course of the summer i think they're sort of coming towards the the end probably of the season now but we we had um we had three or four of them last night um i'm just going to flick this over quickly because there's a one here that is um usually very flighty um which i will try to show well 
and okay. that's swallow tailed and you can probably see the tails um it, it's sort of related to um what's it related to sarah the, um uh, brimstone. brimstone and uh which is a very common yellow one we we get perhaps one or two of these um every now and then so not a very common moth quite big mm. um and it it's um well maybe yeah. um anyway so luckily they're very flighty and very often they they sort of fly off as soon as we see them so um i'm pleased it's actually stayed around all day yeah. um for you to for you to see yeah um while we're on big glamorous um hawk moths let me the only the only other one we've we've had a few over the year but the only other one we've we've seen is the the privet hawk moth um which is a is a fantastic beast uh, again coming towards the end these aren't the as pristine as they they have been um it, it's not bad obviously the the your guess from the name they do feed on privet um they do feed on other other herbaceous um and woody plants as well um and um it's a it's a fabulous uh, fabulous um fabulous creature um you can just about see there the um the sort of red pinky stripes on the abdomen hopefully mm. um yes we can we it's um, brilliant well while, while we're on this uh, this particular one uh, that's a buff arches um which is a, a rather attractive one that that actually uh, that feeds on bramble so um it's quite a a useful uh, useful one to have around we've got a lot of bramble here so we we're almost surprised we don't see more of them but we get uh, we get a few uh, most most uh, traps at this time of year um all oh, got a, a spectacles there as well which um you've probably seen I can't I'm struggling to um to show that yeah um yeah never mind never mind um so let me just try and find this can you just um just find this coronet no, no, I'm, I'm always amazed, Paul, how some some moths just sort of sit there like big, great, big yep. beasts, as it were, and you can move the egg boxes around and they just sit there. And other times, uh, other moths are, as you say, much more flighty and want to escape. This is um this is the coronet. We've we've actually had um we've had quite a lot of these this year. Um we we've had up to about ten or twelve which is pretty amazing. Um, they're reasonably common. It's a nice, it's a, one of the noctuid moths, the sort of commonest group. Um, they, these feed on sort of hazel and um, uh, ash and, and also privet. Um, so that's quite a nice one. Sorry, I'm struggling to get this one in focus. Um, there we go. You're doing very well. Yeah, but it is know, those, really those, those white markings, really, really distinctive. Yeah um what else have we got oh um you'll you'll know this one uh the um uh, buff tip there we go piece oh. of twig piece of birch twig mm. um not, that is a moth. yeah oh oh there yeah. we are <laughs> yeah it's bothered now yeah <laughs> so i'm not used to this there we go nice buff tip yes um, I'll just mention this one because not because it's in particularly unusual at all. Um, this is the common footman. We get quite a few species of footman. Um, the common footman is a, a, a primarily. I think I think many of the footmans actually um, feed on lichens. So we have quite a lot of lichens on the roof of our house, which may explain why there's so many. Um, mm -hmm. We actually had we caught 169 of these last night, wow. um, which I think is far far more than we've ever ever caught before um and they were absolutely um everywhere in the trap so um anyway nice 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 animal nice animal yeah um so you you did actually count 169 we counted 169 <laughs> we always count we we do count numbers yeah um i'm not sure we've ever had that many of no. um anything before actually no, um we get a lot of some of the little micros but um so this is a large emerald um which um there we go try and get him out yeah yeah he might may or may not stay when we when we move him out um probably not keen 
but um, no, oh no, no there not. it goes. Um, anyway, we saw he, it briefly, um, and we know why it. he's called that. But where, what, what does um, what do the larvae feed on? What do the caterpillars eat? The uh, the large emeralds. Yeah. Um, they they feed on um, lots of different. Um, I think sort of again birch, hazel, alder, mm -hmm. um, lots of woody herbaceous. Uh, woody you know shrubs and small trees now this is a nice one we don't often get this um this was the um oh, right bordered beauty mm -hmm. um there we go that's um there's a a group of um geometrids that's the word um sorry there we go can you see that all right yeah that is a really nice one we've we had two of those but i don't i think the first ones we've had um, certainly this year, and probably some years we don't uh, we don't see them at all. Um, that one is um, uh, that's sallows, sallows, willows again, um, birch, um, small trees, things like that. But uh, really, really smart moth. Mm. Um, we've got time for a couple more. Yes. Uh, well, actually, uh, I'm I'm getting so interested that I'm not looking at the time uh, enough. So this is, a small, this is a small emerald. Um, one, one. This is this might be your last one because I have okay. just looked at the time properly. Yeah, okay, um, that's small. So again, small emerald, similar, um, similar base, similar species, but um, much, much, um, much, much uh, smaller than the large, the large emeralds. Uh, rosy footman. Very quickly, there you go. Bonus. Um, okay. Let's have a look. Where is he? Where are you? There we go. There he is. Um, oh, okay. oh God. Right, yeah. there we go. Right, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Rosie Footman. Um, just about to see it. Almost camouflaged by the hand. Mm. Um, much a bit smaller than smaller than the common footman. Uh, we get we had quite a few of these this morning. Um, maybe ten or so. But um, lovely, lovely moth. Also a lichen. Also a lichen feeder. Okay. Nice lichen feeders. Thank, thank you very about, much, Paul. We had about 70, um, 70 species last night, so that's just a, a selection. Wow. Okay, that thank you. Pretty good, yeah. pretty good to us, and it was very nice for a change seeing some moths in the evening um, um, as a sort of prelude for what we might see more of in the in the morning. So that's that's lovely, and we have the last person we're going to see sorry simon you're you're you've not got a lot of time but let say hello. Hello. hello simon in the Hiya. garden do you Hiya. want to, to show us your trap and i'm starting on there the wine glass of wine it is getting really exciting here in exeter there's a big big black cloud over there the wind picking up let me just flip it around so the wind's whipping up the traps on. So um, unlike Paul's, mine's uh, quite a, a weak light. It's only 15 watts. So I tend not to get a great diverse, uh, I don't get great numbers of things, but I've also caught common footmen just recently, just ones or twos in my trap. Um, so the thing I need to tell you is it's National Moth Week. Yay! Yeah. Uh, so nationalmothweek.org.uk there's loads of exciting stuff there how do you tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth there's lots of nice coloring in to be done um, and how to set up uh, with mothing if um, if you want to get started so the final thing i want to just show you because yeah. i did share this last time um, is that i had been growing some rare arable uh, well, weeds, that's a cruel word. They're not weeds at all. Look at this. Um, so I think I told you about the night flowering, night flowering catch fly. Mm. That I, uh, and it's just come out into oh. flower as it's supposed to do at the night time. And mm. these really attractive to moths. They've got a very, um, they're, they're very scented. Um, so uh, the brilliant and the great thing is the other name for this is clammy cockle mm. that, I, I think that's a lovely name and is it is that the name because when moths get to it, it they stick to it <laughs> <laughs> who knows <laughs> answers in the chat window oh okay okay well it's very nice to see um your weeds tell tell me the name of the the white the it was a night 
catch fly. Night flowering catch fly. Yeah. Um, I've forgotten her, very sorry, but the lovely poem from earlier on was talking about white flowers, moths being attracted to white flowers, I think. Of course, they're attracted to all sorts of colours of flowers, but uh, I'm hoping that one will draw them in tonight. Yeah, well, you never know. It's a very bright, lovely individual flower. And um, thank you for uh, being in your garden this evening. And we look forward to seeing what you find and cross fingers with the weather, Simon. I hope you enjoy the rest of your wine and have a good night's sleep. I hope everybody else has had an enjoyable hour of, of moths and energy and messages and poetry and creativity and research and what's going on um, across the country. So we look forward to seeing everyone in the morning tomorrow. I'm going to hand over to Jenny to close yeah. this all down so we will be back in the morning eight till nine a.m tell your friends your neighbors um i don't know anybody that you know about it um please do share the word about uh, moths to a flame um, so that's www.mothstoflame.art somebody was just asking in the chat about um cheap moth traps and maybe that's a, something we can continue in conversation um yeah. tomorrow morning uh, when we meet up again, there there are some details on here about about ways to to trap, but I I think probably that's a really good one for us to to start the the chat with in the morning. Um, yeah. I would just like to spotlight Dave Hodgson for a moment because um, he's got look at this his moth trap there in the background behind him, really shining out bright. Um, and yeah, if, we're I, really was, look if to I was a moth, Jenny, I would go to that. You'd I don't fly, know. Simon. You would fly to Cornwall. But Simon's <laughs> Simon's got wine near me. I think I might go to Simon's <laughs> trap. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is getting a bit dimpsy, isn't it? I should yeah. have my light on, I think. So um, <laughs> yeah, back again in the morning, eight till nine a.m. It's the same link. Um, if you've got anybody else that you know who hasn't got a ticket, they are still available um, through the website. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in the morning. Um, so on that note, I'm going to stop the live stream video.